Hi guys, today's project I've been doing is from Ephemera's Vintage Garden Printout. She's on Etsy, if you just search for Ephemera's Vintage Garden on a Google search you'll find it anyway, but it's the link's there. I'll put it down in the description box as well. She's got some fantastic, well you know I love vintage, so she's got some fabulous vintage stuff. Um, lots of other things, really lovely. Uh, lots of bits and pieces, journals, pages that match. Nice, very nice. So have a look at that. The one I'm using at the moment is the Chic Boudoir. It's a printable junk journal. Um, and I'm going to show you how to do it in a tutorial. But just run through it so you can see it first when it's finished. So we've put a little key on the side to show you how to do that. Um, that's hanging. And then that's the front cover flowers and this is some of the cutouts got a ribbon closure and then these are all the pages that print out They're really lovely and then in some of them we've used some of the cutouts and then mounted on cardboard some of the cutouts to go inside those little pockets we've made um, these are all and I've just mounted them up they're all the cutouts so they're really lovely, lovely vintage images, really nice. So let's get over to the tutorial. Hi everyone, it's Julie. Um, today I thought I'd work with this printable junk journal. It comes from Ephemera's Vintage Garden. It's called Chic Boudoir. Um, it's got lots and lots of nice cutouts with it. Uh, it's got pages. So you've got sheets that come out like this. Some of them have got pages on like this. They're really nice, really nice vintage. She does loads and loads of different things. So have a look and see what else she does. But I thought I'd work with this one today. And they've got pockets and all sorts of things. It's, uh, I think it's six pages. Loads of pockets, loads of tags. Really nice. So I'm going to work with some of them today from that set. This I've cut out already. That's the cover. And I'm going to make just a simple little journal with these. I'm not going to use everything that's in the kit. I'm going to do another tutorial and make another sort of journal with it as well. A paper bag one. Um, you can have a look at that one and see how I do with that one as well. I'll probably use a bit more of it than that one. So you can see the different ways you can use this kit. The actual cover that I cut out from the sheet measures nine and a half by five and three quarters. So I've cut a piece of card that's ten and a half by six and a quarter. And I'm just going to burnish it to make sure it's stuck down really well. I don't want it to lift up. Get rid of any of the sticky bits that are sticking out. That's going to give me a quarter of an inch border all the way around and makes the cover just slightly bigger. Now, you can ink the edges. You can ink the edges of the paper if you want to do that and ink the edges of the card. We need to score it. If you can see, uh, there on the printout, you can see the marks where to score. I'm going to get my scoreboard out and do that. And that's going to make the spine. So if I get hold of where they are, you can see it quite clearly and the pattern's different. It has a little line down it. So I would turn it over as well and do it on the other side. Go over the line. You can see where the lines are, so go over the lines just to reinforce it. There you go. And that's giving you your cover. So we'll just be very careful when we now we've got that paper on the front we don't want to um, to split the paper so go very carefully with it not to split the paper you do it sometimes very quickly it's just too much strain on the paper in one go um, when you fold make sure your edges line up here as well you can make adjust it doing it quite lightly
course you can ink all these edges as well and that's given us our cover. Then we need to get our pages and fold them in half. So fold them in half and score them. You want six different pages from your sheets and binding strips. So you want one at five and three quarters by two and a quarter. Score that one at half an inch and one and three quarters of an inch. There's one five and three quarters again by one and three quarters and you score that at a half and one and a quarter and this third one is five and three quarters again by one and a quarter and score that one at half an inch and three quarters of an inch then what you want to do is where you've scored you need to put some double sided tape just away from that score line so you've got the sticky doesn't go right up against it. Um, do that on both sides of each one and then what we're going to do is add our pages onto those. Again we're taking the outside edge off, so the outside right hand edge. Put the tape on the bottom, the one side at the bottom of your page and then Turn it over, take the page to the binding strip and pop it on like that. Turn it over, your tape's already off there and then close it. Get the next page, do the same again. Double sided tape on the bottom from the score line to the outside again. If you find it easier not to take that off, do it that way. You could do it that way. Again, now we're on the outside edge, taking the tape back in off of the left hand outside edge. Again, let's not take that sticky tape off for a minute. Make sure your pages are up the right way and pop that on, taking your time again and that's it if you don't take that tape off for a minute on this side then it won't stick to that page so then you can take the backing off, that might be easier just in case it gets stuck and then take the other side, the inside of the binding strip off and just literally close it down So now we have our pages done we can add some more bits and pieces from the sheets. I'm not going to add a tremendous amount but it will just give you some more spaces to put tags and things in. That one I really love so I'm just going to leave that because I think that's nice and busy so I've popped pop some bits. That one again I'm leaving and that one. And then this one you can use, these are all cutouts from the sheets. What I want to do is cut that at an angle. I don't want to hide the chair, so I'm just going to cut that from corner to corner, and that will give us just a little corner pocket. That one I'm going to pop on the corner of there, that's the whole piece that's been cut out. This one I'm going to mount in the middle, just to make that a little bit more decorative. That one I'm going to cut again. Um, I'm not going to cut it right down, I'm just going to cut, yeah, cut it right at an angle. Let me show you. Oh, I've just cut the top off that one so that can go in there and you'll still have the bottle so on just there. Just pop that one on the corner there and that will be a pocket in that one. That one can go in there. That's nice with that page. This one can go right across that bottom piece there and make a pocket so I'll just stick the three sides and then we can put a pocket in there that I really love so I'm not going to put anything on that one and then at the end I'm going to just pop that one in now there. Finish the pages we can pop them into the cover I'm going to make a hole in the spine so just judge it in the middle enough to get a brad through and I'm using the Tim Holtz Ideology ring fasteners they're like a little brad they've got a little not little, quite a big jump ring on them. 
and they're decorative so they look really nice on the vintage put that through the hole spread out the back and I would pop a piece of double sided tape on that just to make sure that that is really down hard so that you don't get too much of a bump and then make sure you burnish that in so it's really stuck I'd stick a piece over the top of it just to that's just me I'm always worried about things not sticking so just peel that off so that's given us that on the outside and then we can just mount that key on there I need to just spread that junk ring I expect a little bit to get the key in I'll have to get my pliers out and do that um, and to hang that so that looks really nice now we need to put the binding together so I think probably take the biggest one and your middle sized one and peel off the backing obviously make sure your pages are up the right way it wouldn't be the first time I've done silly things like that either right and centre it so you've got your quarter of an inch each side and then pop it down so it will look like that Ooh, try and get that you need that quarter of an inch gap each side and then I will get the bone folder and really burnish that in and we can do the same again with the smaller one Take your table. you just need to centre that again so you've got your quarter of an inch gap each side of the binding again and then open it out again and just burnish it down I'm getting nail varnish on it it's rubbing off it does that doesn't it nail varnish right okay so that's all your pages in there now we can take the tape off the move that camera back a bit I'm a bit on top of it aren't I take the tape backing off the biggest one now and we can pop that into the cover it's a fairly quick little journal to make if you wanted a quick present to someone right same thing treat it like you did the pages but of course this time you've got a quarter of an inch gap this side and this side as well because your cover's bigger so make sure you've got a quarter of an inch gap here and here and here and here actually a bit less than a quarter of an inch I think it's an eighth of an inch this side on these sides and a quarter on that side so just go steady with it that's it then open it, each page out and burnish that with your bone folder if you happen to be using dark card remember maybe put a piece of um, scrap paper on the top so that you don't get those marks on dark paper when you're burnishing put a bit of scrap paper on the top and then burnish over that helps if you don't have navy blue nail varnish on and scrape <laughs> navy blue pieces everywhere that helps as well <laughs> there you go okay so we've got our little journal done so far now we want to make a ribbon closure so we need to stick something on the front so I need to find one of the cutouts I want to put on the front there for the ribbon binding I've cut two lengths of ribbon this is satin ribbon it's 12 millimeters or half an inch around about 10 inches and I'm going to just pop that on there I don't want it to come right across 
I'm going to take it into there a little bit. Just going to put a piece of tape, score tape. It's about two inches long on the front. I'm going to cover that up, so don't worry about that. And then pop the ribbon on there. Got a reasonable amount on mounted on there because we don't want it to pull off. Again, you can just burnish that on to make sure that's okay. If you want to make them longer than that, you can. That won't make a very big tail on there. So if you want a big tail, make it 12, 13 inches. So that's the front. Once you've got the ribbon on, what I'm going to do is this is just a piece of scrap card and I'm going to just mount that on the top of there. I'm going to put it at an angle because I'm going to um, get that fairly close to the edge. It's just so that the ribbon, when I'm putting the papers on doesn't tear all the papers because they're quite thin so that just gives a bit of strength where that ribbon's pulling all the time so on the back same thing again about two inches of score tape this time we can put it to the edge almost of that paper that paper and I've put some double sided tape and I've mounted one of the cutouts Oh, nearly didn't put the ribbon on then. That's no good. So let's pop that on. As long as you've got about an inch, inch and a half on there, that's fine. I put some double-sided tape on the back of this that I've cut out from the papers. And I'm going to just mount that on top for the back. I think the edges as well. Make sure that that's stuck nicely again. Because I've put that card back in on there it's nice and firm when that's pulling on that all the time so you've got your ribbon closure on there carry on decorating the front I'm using some scotch quick dry glue and this is a Marianne die I'm going to pop that on there that's this one I've also used some Marianne to the I think it and you leaves so I think it, that one is um, there's three different sorts of leaves in there I'm going to use those as well so with the wet glue we'll pop that die cut on there and then we'll mount up some of the I've put some double sided tape on the back and we'll just mount up I don't want to put it past that card I just put it on the edge of the card so that it's not pulling on the paper that was the point of putting the card there that down then we just layer up I've got a, a doily I could just pop a little bit of ink on it just a tiny bit I don't want too much on it I can layer some of that up inside as well and cut some portions off, off. And just layer that up I can pop a bit of wet glue in there just to hold that on. I, w I don't put wet glue much on um, on very thin things normally because it copters the paper but we're covering that up so don't worry too much. So just carry on layering bits up. I've got that one. Um, I want quite a bit of that one showing because it's nice. I'm going to think I'll put the lace underneath that piece. I want something over the top of that. I'm going to put some flowers on here as well. But I want to cover that edge up because I've cut that off. Let's pop that on there now. And just play around really with things. I might put that on there actually. <coughs> if I put some of the score tape, that's quite good for lace and things. The score tape's not bad. It's it's quite a good stick. I'm just going to 
gather that up a bit. As I said, I'm going to pop some flowers on there as well. So let's pop that on there. As you can see, you just, just literally layer and layer and layer. So we just carry on layering up. I have to stick this feather down a bit more up the top, which is I didn't really want to do, but it's a bit of a funny shape. <laughs> it's got bent. Let's pop those in as well. I always manage to get more glue gun bits everywhere. But don't worry too much. It's not an exact science. This just fiddle until you get it right. If not, pull it back off. Try again. Doesn't really matter either way, really. That one on there. Actually, they're nice because they've got the wire on, so you can pull those about a bit. And um, pull that up there. I'm going to just mount that key that other key on the front down the bottom here somewhere just on there get rid of all the little <laughs> strands it's your nightmare isn't it strands all over everything for those who've seen my videos you'll see that I've got a nice lovely look at this new gun my old crabby old thing uh, that I'm I have. also going to pop on one of these. This is from Mother Care where I work. These are for um, clips, hair clips. Um, they just pull the butterfly off. And put that in there. So that's your front. And we'll just finish the inside now. So the only thing left to do now is to make some tags, long tags to go into the pockets of each page. And you'll want them to be uh, three and let me think, three and a quarter by five and a half. And I rounded the corners with my round it all. I'm just distressing the edges with the ink and then I'll cut out some more of the pieces from the pages and I've just stuck them on one side so that they can use the other side for journaling or photographs whichever they like and so double sided tape because as I, like I said I won't use wet glue because it's very thin the paper and then it'll cockle and I'm just stick them on there I've got six already done so I've, they're really lovely aren't they really clear really nice vintage images look at that one it's really lovely um, so they're going because we only stuck one side down at the bottom when we made the pages they will go in each page at the top They'll just have a little bit to come out of the top so you can pull them out and they go in every page so although I've done mine fairly plainly there's lots of scope for adding embellishments um, you can put perfect pearls in it lots of bits where you can put perfect pearls in the middle of the flowers and just to highlight things you could do some highlighting with some glossy accents like the clock the shoe the bottle you know put rhinestones in there pearls in there flowers whatever you like some 
more bows you can really pretty it up beautifully but I've just done the construction for you so that you can make one yourself quickly and then you can decorate it how you want to